West Virginia CDL has mad practice test. Question 1. Do you need to stop before railroad crossing if you are hauling 100 pounds of Division 4.3 materials? No. Only if the arm is down telling vehicles to stop. Impossible to tell without more information. Yes. Answer. Yes. Question 2. A placarded vehicle must carry what type of fire extinguisher? One with a rating of 5 BC minimum. One with a rating of. One with a rating of 10 BC minimum. One with a rating of 10 AB minimum. Answer. One with a rating of 10 BC minimum. Question 3. Which of the following is not an acceptable type of marking for hazardous materials? UN marks. Name in italics. Identification number. Descriptive name in Roman print. Answer. Name in italics. Question 4. How far away must you stay from a bridge, tunnel, or building if you are carrying Division 1.2 or 1.3 materials? 100 feet or more. 500 feet or more. 200 feet or more. 300 feet or more. Answer. 300 feet or more. Question 5. Cargo tanks are. Bulk packaging permanently attached to your vehicle. Filled while they are off your vehicle, then attached for transportation. Only made in one size. Bulk packaging temporarily attached to your vehicle. Answer. Bulk packaging permanently attached to your vehicle. Question 6. What is the main difference between a portable tank and a cargo tank? Permanent or temporary attachment. Being filled while on versus while off the vehicle. Portable tanks must additionally show the owner or lessee's name on them. All of the above. Answer. All of the above. Question 7. How often should you check the tires on a placard a trailer that has dual tires? Each time you stop. Once every three hours. Start of each day and every time you stop. Once every hundred miles. Answer. Start of each day and every time you stop. Question 8. In what location must you keep your shipping papers which describe any hazardous materials? On the driver's seat anytime you are outside of the vehicle. In a fireproof pouch under the driver's seat that you can reach while you are driving. In a fire safe pouch under the passenger seat while you are driving. In a locked glove compartment anytime you are outside of the vehicle. Answer. On the driver's seat anytime you are outside of the vehicle. Question 9. Which of the following materials would be acceptable floor liner for moving Division 1.1 or 1.2 materials? Stainless steel. Non-ferrous metal. Carbon steel. All of the above.
Answer. Non-ferrous metal. Question 10. The two other places where the hazardous identification number must appear are On the gas tank and a sticker in the glove compartment On the back of the truck and inside the glove compartment Any bulk packaging in the cargo tanks On a temporary license plate holder and the steering wheel Answer any bulk packaging in the cargo tanks. Question 11. Which of the following three hazard classes should not be placed into a temperature control trailer, one with a heater, air conditioner unit? Classes 1, 3, and 4. Classes 1, 4, and 5.1. Classes 1, 3 and 6 Classes 1, 2.1 and 3 Answer Classes 1, 2.1 and 3 Question 12, the Emergency Response Guidebook, ERG Contains an index of hazardous material ID numbers which is why you must label things correctly. Is studied by emergency personnel to help keep the public safe. Was created by the National Department of Transportation, so it is used nationwide. All of the above. Answer All of the above. Question 13. If you are already carrying 100 pounds of silver cyanide, what precautions must you take if you are given papers at dock to carry 100 cartons of battery ast? Make sure the silver cyanide is loaded on top of the battery acid. Make sure the battery acid is loaded on top of the silver cyanide. Inform someone and not load the battery acid. Make sure there is plenty of space between the two. Answer Inform someone and not load the battery acid. Question 14. Which of the following hazard classes utilizes a transport index in order to determine how much of it can be loaded on a single vehicle for transport? Class 3. Flammable liquids. Class 7, Radioactive Materials Class 1, Explosives Class 4, Live Chickens Answer Class 7, Radioactive Materials Question 15, What is a technical name? The name for a hazardous material most commonly used on the street. The name for a hazardous material most commonly used in the trucking community, accepted as standard. The name for a hazardous material used in scientific journals and texts, recognized as its chemical and microbiological name. The medical terms for hazardous materials used by medical personnel. Answer The name for a hazardous material used in scientific journals and texts, recognized as its chemical and microbiological name. Question 16. A safe haven is A place to stay once you have reported your company for illegal activity. A place that has been approved to park unattended vehicles carrying explosives. The slang term for the last stop at the end of your driving day when carrying hazardous materials. A place where it is safe to dump any kind of hazardous materials. Answer A place that has been approved to park unattended vehicles carrying explosives. 
Question 17. Your engine runs a pump when you are delivering compressed gas. Should you turn off your engine before or after you unhook the hoses after finishing that delivery? Turn it off before unhooking. Turn it off on arrival. Use other power to run the pump. Turn it off after unhooking. Leave it on the entire time. Answer Turn it off before unhooking. Question 18. What action should you take if there is no phone available and you discover your hazardous materials shipment leaking at a rest stop? Leave your truck parked with emergency lights and walk for help. Keep driving, slowly and cautiously, until you reach a phone. Keep driving for help as quickly as possible. Send someone for help with all the necessary information. Answer Send someone for help with all the necessary information. Question 19. Where are the two main places where the hazardous identification number appear? On the shipping papers and on a secret document in the driver's wallet. On the package and on paperwork at the shipping destination. On the shipping paper and on the package. On the package and on paperwork at the shipping point of origin. Answer On the shipping paper and on the package. Question 20. If you are carrying Division 1.2 or 1.3 materials, how far away must you park from the traveled portion of the roadway? At least half a mile. At least 5 feet. At least 10 feet. At least 20 feet. Answer. At least 5 feet. Question 21. Which of the following is not something you need to know in order to determine if you need to use placards? The substance or materials hazard class. The amount of a substance or material being shipped. The amount of all hazardous materials of all classes you are carrying in your vehicle. The manufacturing date for the materials. Answer The manufacturing date for the materials. Question 22. What are shippers trying to accomplish when they package the material? Make it easy to identify. Make it as light as possible. Make it easy to open and close. All of the above. Answer Make it easy to identify. Question 23. Which of the following is a necessary qualification for non-bulk packaging? A max capacity of 450 liters or less, if it is used as a receptacle for liquids. Max net mass less than 400 kilograms or less if used as a receptacle for a solid. Max water capacity less than 454 kilograms or less if used as a receptacle for gases. All of the above. Answer All of the above Question 24. Which hazard classes must you never smoke, or perform any activity involving fire, within 25 feet of? Class 5.2 only Class 4.2 only Classes 1, 2, 3 and 4 Class 1 only. Answer. 
Classes 1, 2, 3 and 4. Question 25. What is the purpose of a driver placarding his or her vehicle? Giving people something interesting to look at while driving. Forcing other drivers to stay 20 feet away in every direction. Communicating risk. Warning those with children to drive in another lane. Answer. Communicating risk. Thank you for watching the video and wish you will get your driver license soon.